Okay, today we're going to be talking about the scroll saw, the fret saw, and the coping saw. Now, you're probably interested in making curved cuts, delicate cuts, tight corners, and tight turns. This is what these saws are used for, but the problem is, is which one do you need to use? We're going to go through that. We're going to look at each of these saws individually and talk through the pluses uh, and the minuses, the drawbacks of each of them. We're going to talk through which one you'll want to have on hand, depending on the type of cut you're looking to make, depending on your skill level, depending on your budget, depending on how much space you have in your shop. These are all the factors we'll look at. And at the end, we'll give you a recommendation for each type of saw and its best uses for you. So stick around. And if you like what you're seeing, please make sure that you hit the like button on the video. All right, let's dive in. Today, we're going to take a look at your alternatives for cutting pieces that have uh, fine and intricate curves, delicate curves, sharp curves, and you need to make cuts. And we're going to be looking at a scroll saw, we're going to be looking at a fret saw, and we're going to be looking at a coping saw. And what we'll do is we'll talk through the differences. Clearly, just by holding these up, you can probably discern that they vary quite a bit in price, being the least expensive being this coping saw, and the most expensive being uh, this saw. And so we will uh, try to figure out what you, what price, you know, what you should get in your price point to do the job that you need to do. The easiest one of these to use is a scroll saw. Let's say we are cutting uh, curves. So I, I've already cut a curve here and I'm just going to simply, uh, what I want to do today is this particular curve. And you can see I have a fairly long piece of wood that'll come into play here as we look at these three different saws. Uh, that's why I chose such a long piece of wood. And also the tightness of the turn uh, is important. The easiest uh, to use would be uh, this scroll saw. And the way we, the, the action of the scroll saw, uh, it has a blade held uh, in an upper arm, the end of an upper arm, and the other end of the blade is at the end of a lower arm. And then there's a big throat uh, in between these two arms. And so this saw reciprocates up and down, uh, and it cuts pushing down into, uh, pushing down, and that holds the piece against, the piece that you're cutting gets held against the table. The table is firm, and so cutting a straight cut and always having the blade perpendicular to the workpiece is very easy to achieve. So if you can afford it and you have the space in your shop and you can justify the price based on how many times you're going to do curved cuts, then this would be a very good solution for you. The limitation is the thickness that you can put in here because of this hold down mechanism here, uh, which you put down against the wood. But the biggest limitation is you have to, if you're gonna cut, say, starting at this side of the curve and go around here, you would have to move the piece of wood like this, and you can see that it's too long to make this cut in this saw. Uh, so that would be a limitation of this saw. So a reason to seek another solution, the reasons to seek another solution would be the cost of the saw, the amount of space it takes up in your shop, and the limitation of the throat and how big a piece you can cut. The alternatives that I want to talk about, the least expensive is a coping saw. Now a coping saw is a frame here and the frame then has a blade suspended between these two points. And the blade is right now parallel to the frame of the saw. I can also turn that blade using these levers, and I can make the orientation of the blade up to 90 degrees off of uh, this saw, which allows you to go around corners without this distance being as much of a limitation. But now, now we're talking a handsaw. And when we talk a handsaw, we have to, first of all, hold the workpiece somehow. And then second of all, uh, 
pass the blade through the workpiece. And if you're making a perpendicular cut, which we normally do, you have to be skilled at holding the saw perpendicular to the wood. And then you have to be able to turn the blade and go around that corner. And in this case, you'd probably go halfway starting here, turning this way, and you'd go the other half going this way and turning this way. Now, let me put this in a vise to show you how you might hold this piece of wood. So we can now cut like this. And we simply follow that curve. You can see that I'm, I'm working with a quarter inch piece of wood. If you have a three quarter inch piece of wood, you can probably discern that it would take a, quite a bit of effort and it would be slow going, going through this piece of wood. But you can get through the wood and you can turn it simply by turning as you are sawing. And you make the turn easier by buying a narrower blade. This is about as narrow as you would use in this particular uh, coping saw. Now, if you have tighter turns, that is when you would use this saw, which is called a fret saw. Now, hopefully the camera can get in close enough to see that this blade is very, very delicate and narrow and very fine. And what that gets you is an ability to control the curvature of the saw so that you could cut little tiny circles in the wood with a saw like this fret saw. And you can also do the kind of uh, work that we just demonstrated with the coping saw. Again, it's a matter of keeping the blade lined up and keeping it perpendicular to the workpiece and then following that line. I'm having a little trouble following the line because I don't have a line on my side of the board. It's only on your side of the board. You would have the line on your side of the board and you would be watching it and you would be following that line as you used this fret saw. This fret saw also has a much bigger throat and it has, uh, uh, it, it's, it's actually more rigid than this inexpensive saw. So this saw might cost you 10 bucks or less. This saw might cost you 40 or $50. And this saw uh, entry level is probably closer to $100. This particular saw is probably $125 or $150. And you can buy a fairly good one of these saws for a couple of hundred dollars. So uh, I, I need to emphasize that learning how to use one of these saws takes some practice. I'm talking about now the coping saw and the fret saw because you do have to get used to the curve, the curve nature and trying to keep the blade uh, perpendicular to the, to the work surface, uh, especially on thicker wood than what I was demonstrating there. So let's recap and summarize. What we're interested in here today is trying to make a choice of what saw will I buy if what I want to do is make fairly tight curved cuts. The easiest one to use with the best, smoothest, most uh, uh, pristine result is to buy uh, this particular saw, which has the limitation of the throat and the limitation of the, of the depth. If you don't have the money uh, to buy this saw, then you would want to go with a coping saw or a fret saw because they're quite a bit less expensive and they take up virtually no space in your shop whatsoever. Uh, but they are more difficult to use and they require a higher skill level and they require some practice. So we hope this has been helpful to you. If you liked uh, what you saw, please hit the like button and we suggest you subscribe so that we can keep you informed about future uh, uh, content that we put uh, on YouTube.